Hey guys, Misto here, and welcome to the final episode of Season 6 of the 100 Day Challenge, starring Weber, the Indigestible. Let's hop into it. So, we left last episode uh, finishing up our little berry farm. Some of these will remain unfertilized, sadly. So, this is our final episode. We may have one more challenge, one more wave of hounds spawning. But, uh, we'll, we'll deal with them when we come. Why do we have more than enough fertilizer? What did I miscount? Oh, wait, we didn't put down one, but that's... Hmm, that's odd. We have rot in some chests, don't we? thought we had one somewhere. Oh, oh well. Let's, uh, let's put this with the berry bushes. It'll never be used. Rest in peace, everything here. Wow, all oh, right, we get all of those. That's beautiful, beautiful. So... Let's talk about the series as a whole and how Weber fits in to the balance scheme of Shipwrecked. And uh, we're going to go ahead and eat some food while we're here too. Just to get a nice full belly. Um, so, we said in the first episode, Weber's stats are very, very different from Wilson's. He has 25 more hunger, 25 more health, but 100 less sanity. That is minus 50 total stats from Wilson, who is the metric of balanced stats in Don't Starve. Or at least he is the ruler through which, or by which we measure balanced stats. Uh, and it turns out, at least in Shipwrecked, that's fine. Sanity is a non-issue. Uh, banana pops are insanely strong so long as you can keep eating them and Since every problem from sanity comes from a percentage healing up 33% of your sanity with one banana pop is pretty crazy Get out of my way Ooh, Monster meat. There's something we also want to talk about uh, Weber is able to eat monster meats without any adverse effects in any of its forms, it always provides 18.8 .8 food, about 20 food per monster meat. You can dry it, you can cook it, all of that's fine. And that's actually really, really good in Shipwrecked. I thought that, like, in the first episode, I was even like, this isn't going to be much of a feature. Once we get a crock pot, we're just going to cook our food and it doesn't matter. It actually did. I greatly, greatly underestimated how much food we were going to be eating when we were just out and about. Like, there were lots of times we were just, you know, exploring. And it was like, well, I got this, uh, it was even time, like, I just got this, uh, snake and I got meat from it, may as well eat it. There were lots of times we were even just chopping trees over here. Just like what happened, we get the monster meat, that's another 20 food we can just add to our belly for free. Like, that's pretty absurd. Almost every other character, if they find random food, they at least have to cook it. Like, he can... That's... It really added up. The amount of time we saved. The amount of fires we saved. And, yeah. Like, that's... I greatly underestimated that. So I apologize to any people who played Weber and were like, Oh, this, this guy. This guy. He thinks he doesn't want to eat monster meat. No. Uh, yeah, I admit I was wholly wholly wrong on that front. Eating monster meat was a much greater boon than I thought it would be. And yeah, that's that's basically all that's need to say there. Like, it didn't feel like something that you needed, but having that option, having that extra food in your tummy every time you got hungry, every time you just happen to find a monster meat and like we're nowhere near home, that, oh, don't fight him. There we go, like this, right there. That just topped off our belly almost. Just for nothing. Nothing wrong with that. Just free stuff. And yeah, it makes this absurd. We're gonna head home for the night. So, yeah, eating monster meat, definitely insane. Another point I was wrong on Weber, go ahead and throw that out there. I thought the beard was gonna be a lot more helpful than it was. I was like, guys, in case we have any kind of problem getting silk, this is going to give us almost enough silk to have a top hat constantly. Because as you've seen, we've worn a top hat like constantly this playthrough. 
But look at our chest. We have almost 120 silk. If we wanted to, we could go get 120 silk. Just to make the number even. And at times we've even been like, can I burn silk? Please, game? Please? Like, we've gotten so much silk from spiders that it's insane. It's just insane. Ooh, let's grab these. Boom. Boom. There we go. And we'll leave these in here. Uncooked, because they're good filler. And yeah, I just... Mm, I thought the beard would be more useful. It's it's honestly... Just to put it like completely bluntly up front, it's basically pointless in Shipwrecked. It doesn't do anything. Uh, in Reign of Giants, it gives you a very strong insulation factor. Not as strong as Wilson's beard, of course. But... It's good. It helps. It gives you about another three minutes. Not three minutes. About another two minutes away from the fire. I think it's two minutes for his. Three minutes for Wilson's. And that adds up. It doesn't take your head. Doesn't take your chest slot. Doesn't take your head slot. It's just free extra insulation, which is great for Reign of Giants. And then the added bonus of giving you silk, and every time you shave, you also get ten sanity. But uh, let's let's also take a minute to look at our sanity. We're at a hundred. We're maxed. We're not losing sanity, and it's night. Also, third fire radius, because look how far away we can go. <sighs> Jeez. Obsidian fire pit is the best thing in the shipwrecked. I really wish you could bring obsidian fire pit over to Reign of Giants. That would be hype. That would be hype, son. But sanity is a non-issue in shipwrecked. You can kill the Quacken and get a Thulacite suit. Which will give you 3.3 sanity every minute. That's the same as a top hat. These two combined will constantly heal sanity. Constantly. Even at night, you only lose 5 sanity. So you're gaining 1.6. That's ridiculous. But okay, Thulacite suit's only a 50% drop if you can kill the Quacken. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, there's another item that we were going to make in this playthrough if we didn't get the Thulacite suit. You can make a limestone suit for three limestone and two ropes? Maybe three ropes. That's it. Just three limestone and some number of ropes. Oh, he's going to come after him. Yeah. Right. The limestone suit uh, slows you by 10%. That kind of sucks. But it also... Gives you two sanity every minute, almost as much as the Thulacite suit. And when combined with a top hat, will regenerate very, very slowly your sanity during the night. Oops, it's coming for him. And that's that's good enough. During the day, it's gonna regenerate quite a bit. And come here, just go go away, go away. All right. So yeah, there's also banana pops, and I greatly underestimated the ice maker. If you chop down a tree and get a banana, you have enough resources to make a banana pop, so long as you have at least one twig. That's crazy. That's Sanity is a complete non-issue. It's honestly embarrassing looking back at some of my older 100-day uh, challenges and how we did die specifically to Sanity. Uh, now granted, those were in the early days. We got really wet, we didn't know how to dry off, a whole boondoggle that looked really bad. We're gonna go back to chopping trees. There's one right near our base. We can leave wood on the ground. No, we can put it in our chest. We're just wasting time. And yeah, so sanity is not really much of an issue. This was our wood chest. See, like, there's there's limestone. We can almost make a limestone suit. We have the coral for it, too. Oh, it's just crazy. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, and killing the Quacken is, of course, ridiculous as well. That's something you should be trying to do on every character. Um, if you're still using a backpack, the booty backpack will give you one... Uh, no, that's not what I wanted. Why did you do that, Weber? Oh my goodness. There we go. Don't eat my meat. Don't eat my meat. All right. Uh, killing the Quacken is something you should try to do on every character, because it gives you a very strong boon. It can give you pretty much everything you need. Like, if you get 
get an obsidian drop, it's extremely unlikely that you're not going to get enough to make an obsidian fire pit. And as you've seen in this playthrough at least, the obsidian fire pit is crazy. It gives so much light. It is better than the, um, the chiminea during hurricane and monsoon season. Like, strictly better. The only time it could be worse than the chiminea is if your base floods. And if you're putting down an obsidian fire pit, it's not super, super hard to just uh, go the extra mile and get, um, get some flooring down there to protect your investment. You also need sandbags too, and of course flooring is not going to be as easy to get on every character as it was on Weber. Uh, we had access to essentially infinity snakeskin. We had more snakeskin than we could ever, ever use. We have over 40 in our box right now. And there's just no way we could ever use it. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, there we go. So, not every character will have as easy a time flooring as Weber did. Uh, you can still make wooden flooring, uh, but there's not a lot of, um, what's it called? There's not a lot of variety, so your base isn't going to look as nice, which to me is a very big deal. Uh, and it is another reason that many people don't even mega base in shipwreck to begin with. Um, another reason being uh, the inability to put down walls. Like walls are a really good feature of mega bases. Not that they do anything, because even in Reign of Giants, they are purely decorative. So it's kind of just annoying that the devs made them uh, get blown down by the winds. It really sucks. Like you think they would have put in some wall that was immune? At least, like, maybe limestone wall is porous enough that the wind just goes through it. Or sandbags don't get ruined by the wind. You know, any of those kind of things would have been good. Oh well. Uh, that's fine, let's just burn all six of these. The toastiest of fires. This fire is huge! Huge! Right, ooh, wind's in our favor. Oh, that's pretty fun. Not that. These two, yeah. Go put those up. Woo! Oh my goodness, is our wood chest temporarily? Yeah. Alright. Let's see, so... Uh, we were... Oh my goodness, we've lost our train of thought there. We're talking about how sanity is just a non-issue. It's very easy to get past. And... Then it pops all of that stuff. Where were we? Oh, mega basing! Mega basing is not that good because of the lack of... There's not a variety of flooring. Like, we could have, um, what's it called? We could have nice checkered board flooring. If this were Reign of Giants, we could have, uh, we could have the, instead of snakeskin rugs, we would have carpeted flooring, which looks really nice to me. I love carpeted flooring. I love checkered flooring. Actually, both of those are really good, and we don't have either in here. Snakeskin flooring is okay. I'm fine with it. And it is functionally strong, because you can plant on top of it, which is pretty crazy in and of itself. Well, let's put on our blower suit, just not get wet. Nope. Don't come over here. Okay. So, you just... The lack of flooring, the inability to put down walls without them being completely wasted, because right now, this would be destroying walls. Like, as you've seen on sandbags that aren't being attacked, they're just getting destroyed because the wind's coming by. Like, this used to be full strength, and now... Now it's just almost, it's dying, it's dying, it's game over, although maybe it got attacked by spiders. Alright, and uh, previously, uh, in the older versions of this game, you didn't even have cobblestones unless you used a mod, because they, uh, it was just like an oversight, honestly, they just forgot that um, there's no rocky turf in this, so there's no way to make cobblestones. They changed it so magma turf worked, which is uh, fine, but that you can only craft that in Shipwrecked. So if you bring Magma Turf back to Reign of Giants, the recipe changes, and then you can't, you can't uh, make cobblestones. It's kind of weird how they did that. You think it'd be a way to just make both the same recipe to make the same thing, but mm, but that's fine. That's fine. They, we do have cobblestones now, so that problem is fixed, and I'm really glad they did that. Uh, I wish they would make some way to get marble in this mode, just because of how much I like checkered flooring. Uh, right now, the only way to do that is to make the checkered flooring in Reign of Giants and bring it over here. 
if you bring the marble, it is not good enough. You do not have the recipe. Like, your recipe tab actually changes between the modes. So, uh, it's not enough. Not enough. Let's see, are we gonna be shaved? I think we're gonna be shaved for whenever we want to end this. So let's go ahead and do that. Get off me. Get off me, silk. There's only one silk. It's a one, three, and six when you shave. I always don't want you. Doggies are coming. Woo! Let's get it on. That's gonna be exciting. Uh, I guess we'll use the Thulacite Club. We'll just go all in. Uh, Thulacite Club's actually made for kiting enemies because it gives you the increased movement speed. But, um, I guess we'll just use the Cutlass. Cutlass is more damage. Let's go. Let's go right now. Oh, you're already dead. Uh, we can't kill the second doggy immediately because we'll freeze if we do. See, we just froze. But, all right, thanks for protecting us. There we go. Um, man, we're getting so many Ice Hounds. This is what we wanted in our past life, but now it's actually harder. Well, Cutlass is just so strong. Let me kill you. Look at all these hound's teeth that we get when the game is basically over. Way to mock me, game. Whoa, spiders! No, I want this monster meat. I don't want to have to deal with you, too. Oh, you got that meat, you jerk. Whatever. Just here, take a trap. There you go. Go away. Go away. Woo! Let's get our blubber suit on. We're already wet enough. That's good. We're good, we're good. All right, let's get these hound's teeth. Nice. So, this is more Hound's Teeth than we've seen on any playthrough, because we finally got a big wave in the hurricane season. Uh, you're really at the mercy of what the game wants to give you. Um, because if you, because each Ice Hound guarantees drop, guaranteed to drop two Hound's Teeth, which is crazy. And then once you get Hound's Teeth, you can start making Tooth Traps, you can make a Trap, it's hard, you can't really make a Trap Room, those usually require, um, what's it called? Those require uh, walls, which you can't have, right? I mean, you can make walls, but they're going to get blown down. So there's no point. No point to me. Let's get her coming. Nice and cool. Woo! You guys just yelling at the lightning? Is that what just happened there? I think that's what just happened there. We didn't need to eat that much food, but it is fine. Let's see. We picked up this boat lantern. I think it's going to blow away if we put it down. Will it? Nope. We also have this gem that we don't need. Packham has a bunch of gems. Let's just get those. Put them in our rare chest. Let's have all that stacked up. So many gems. They're truly outrageous. Because we're in the winter season, we're going to end up more with more of these than these. And, uh, yeah. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't make a difference. Woo, let's heal up. We're low on HP. Oh, no, we're not. <laughs> Alright. Oh, there we go. Top hat. Get our, get our sanity coming back. Let's see. What else? What else? Uh, Spider Wars. Spider Wars is a big part of Weber from Reign of Giants. And uh, I was led to believe from research that it would not be a viable tactic in Reign of Giants because the meat would come out uh, at half, half of its uh, freshness, meaning that it will go stale basically the same day. If you cook it, you might have two days of it being fresh, and uh, neither of those are really ideal situations. No, we're just going to grab some grass during this night, and I guess whatever hail comes through here, because our guy's going to be crazy for it. But, um, I, I think I underestimated, I, uh, what is it, I overestimated how bad stale food would be. You can cook it to get two days, you can eat it immediately, it does come out in green freshness like you can just eat it right then and there and that's okay um and if you have the resources if you've set up even a basic farm you can start making drying racks and the drying racks are going to turn it from stale or almost dead to completely fresh and it's jerky which means it'll last 20 days throw it in the fridge it lasts 40 days so i think spider wars are still a viable tactic uh, even though I undersold that point earlier and I didn't even utilize it till it was already like, wow, we're super rich. There's no point in this at all. Let's put these over here. Uh, yeah, let's just get the fire going so we don't have to worry about it. Oh, big fire. Big, big fire. Maybe garbage. Woo! 
Too bad you can't burn silk. We have so much. We made a top hat. We're still at... We're one less than we were at before we made this top hat, which is down to... Down 5%. Woo! Oh. I don't want to end this playthrough low on sanity. We gotta make ourselves... A nice banana pop. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, let's go ahead and make this. He's about to attack. Are you seriously not? I thought you were. You looked like you were 100% on the warpath. Alright, that's fine. There is our... There's gonna be our full sanity. We try to end uh, all of these on full stats because that's just a very, very satisfying feeling. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's get the food inside me. This is blown down. It is a graphical glitch. It actually... It, like, if you, uh inspect it he says to the same effect let's see yeah what else do we want to talk about uh, spider wars were okay stats are great sanity is great eating monster is good and the beard is pointless yeah that's uh that's pretty much our rundown on weber in let's get over here so we can see ourselves oh yeah there we go. right there that's beautiful that's pretty much our rundown in reign of giants weber is a good character his stats are in his favor low sanity is not a problem uh, it's definitely not a problem. Having the increased HP, as we mentioned last episode, with one piece of Thulacite gear, it's worth the equivalent of having 250 HP before you die. And if you have both pieces of Thulacite gear, it's worth the equivalent of 2,500 HP. Like, your Thulacite armor will break before you need to heal if you're at full HP. So it's not actually worth that much unless you have another... Thulacite gear to put on after yours breaks. But yeah. Like, that's how absurd it is. Look at these silly spiders. Only four legs. I have eight. I am clearly the spider king. Far better. There we go. We're already up to... Th there. We have made our top hat, which has lost 9% of its durability. And it's there. Ooh, we can wear our Thulacite gear to wear to end it in this episode. Oh. Spiders. Yeah, thank you. Woo. Oh, there's more. We may, we may just random in to 120 silk before we end this. I kind of want to just go pick it up so we have the number at this point. Meat. Oh, you jerks. You jerks. There's so many things we could do to get to silk. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Oh. Yeah, and the 25 hunger is kind of useful. It would allow us to eat meaty stew, which we just have no reason to make, because we can just top off. It basically lets us ignore our hunger for an extra, just a, an extra little bit. Just an extra little bit. Couple that with the extra HP, which you have if you start starving. You just, uh, you have that little bit of extra time away from everything. No. Ah, uh, spiders. Go away. This is my friend. Oh my goodness, positioning. There we go, got him. Oh, that 100% he's on him now. There we go. Yep, I think Weber is a fairly strong character for Shipwrecked. Um, maybe down the line, or after I finish the challenge, I'll try to make an actual... an actual tier list. Now, I know a tier list doesn't quite uh, fit with the Don't Starve theme and you could always argue certain characters are better than others or maybe it's purely preference like oh I like this character so I'm better on them but um it is a good reference point for starting players and I'm gonna try to make it very loose not like S A B C D have a whole bunch of tiers I would like to full stats no food food eat there's a light crown on. Woo. Okay. Boom. Guys. We have survived the day 100. Full stats. Beautiful base. You know what? We're not playing other episodes. Walk around and talk while we do this. Just looking at the wonderful base. Our berries will start coming in pretty soon. And yeah. I think Weber is a fairly strong character. Uh, definitely definitely not as strong as WX. WX is in a tier of his own. He is ridiculously broken. Doesn't have to do with individual uh, character skill. 
I do have, I did have some experience playing WX before we uh, went into that playthrough, but it did not make a difference. I believe anyone could see, oh, see, they're starting up. I believe any player could take WX with just some advice from other players. Like, hey, try to get snake skin early on from chopping down trees and fighting the snakes. And you can use that snake skin to become immortal and then start killing a bunch of jellyfish. And that's it. Yeah. So, Weber is definitely a strong character. His stats and his ability to eat monster meat, which I wholly underestimated alone, would put him as an obscenely strong character in uh, Shipwrecked. Most likely, I would put him into the highest tier that is not the WX tier. Like, I don't know if any other character is going to be as broken as WX, so I'm basically going to put him into a tier of his own. Like WX is god tier, and then Weber most likely belongs in any in the tier directly below god tier. He is a fair character who you can play to his strengths, but he is strong enough that you can ignore his strengths, play standard, and you'll be stronger than uh, Wilson most likely. Because of just yeah because you can eat the monster meat and because his stats are very well suited for shipwrecked sanity is less of an issue like even less of an issue in shipwrecked in uh in reign of giants sanity becomes a non-issue as soon as you get your tam shanter but you could whiff you could whiff on your first winter and not get one and that sucks but for shipwrecked i would highly recommend ugh, i highly recommend highly recommend weber for anyone who thinks the character is cute, has wanted to try him before, maybe you've struggled in Reign of Giants playing him, he is definitely a high tier character for Shipwrecked. He's very strong, and I greatly enjoyed this playthrough. Unlike my WX playthrough, that was no fun and no challenge. Weber had some unique challenges that we pushed past, we had some very lucky moments, that made this more interesting and we developed a very strong base in spite of uh, shipwrecked not being conducent to mega basing strategies uh, almost no serious player tries to make a mega base in shipwrecked because the lack of uh, flooring the inability or the futility I would say the futility of building walls as they'll simply be destroyed every seasonal cycle makes this not as rewarding to build an infinitely long survivable base as it is in Reign of Giants. But, yes. So that's it, guys. If you like this video, if you liked seeing us survive on our third character, that is 3 out of 15 characters done for the 100-day challenge, please hit that like button. If you want to start a conversation with me, if you want to recommend characters that I should be playing in the future. But do know that by the time this episode is up, I will almost certainly be filming episode se or season 7 already. So give me advice for season 8, season 9. Vote early, vote often. Famous advice there. Vote early, vote often. For the characters you want to see me play in future episodes. I'm feeling very good after this episode. So maybe we'll even uh, sit down and start working on Season 7 immediately. Uh, we're feeling pretty peppy. This was a very good, very solid, very solid run. I'm very satisfied with it. And I hope you guys who have stuck with us through this series, especially after WX's series turned into what I thought, what I felt was a snore fest. Like, we commentated as much as we could on it, but it was so trivially easy. It was... It was playing the game on easy mode. Now, I won't say that Weber was not very strong. I won't say that we didn't get very lucky. But, Don't Starve is a game where you can snowball your luck into a better position. And you only see where you're getting lucky. You don't see where a skilled player has taken luck and used that to put himself into a better position where more opportunities for luck can knock on the door. Like, those situations are hard to see. It's very easy to see, oh, well you got a blubber suit 
in like your first uh, X marks the spot, that trivialized the game. You even said that when you got it. But we were able to push past those seasons because we had the blubber suit. We strategized to make a very uh, floor-heavy base. That way we wouldn't have to worry about the monsoon season or any kind of mosquitoes. We were able to push past that because we utilized our luck. We trivialized something later on. And we snowballed from a strong position to an even stronger position. Whereas WX was simply god mode the entire time. It didn't matter if we were lucky because he was just too strong. So guys, as always, if you would like to continue surviving together, hit that subscribe button and you'll be automatically updated anytime I upload a new video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Let's go to